And here comes. Yeah, here comes sherry, just in time. Yeah, my grandfather used to drink sherry. He, he would say sherry is always on time, anytime it comes. <laughs> Are you there, sherry? Can you hear us, sherry? I don't think you have a microphone, but maybe you can start the video. Okay, you're going to start the video later. That's cool. Okay, so we're going to start working right here. So uh, some of you were with us on the first webinar, and Lynn, I know you checked it out. I think you checked it out, didn't you? The recording, yeah. That's cool. So we're here now to do the second day that actually completes training, and that means that we're going to see if you just can tell us a little bit of, about how you've been using tapping in the last. Yeah, thanks for that, Christina. That's wonderful. Um, just tell us a little bit about how you've been using tapping since we met last. And if you have any questions or reflections, just kind of short, but to get on the same page. So, Christina, why don't you start? Uh, I'll unmute you so you can talk. There you go. Yes. Okay. This is me, Anna Nelson. We are uh, part of the EFT group uh, in the Houston area, in the Woodlands. And uh, well, uh, we have uh, Anna was. Introduce yourself, Anna. Yeah, we have been doing the tapping for over 10 years, and we want to be able to spread TTT because TTT is so much easier to learn and to teach, especially the Spanish speaking population. And uh, there is no big money into giving people certificates. So uh, I'm the English and Swedish speaker, and Christina is the Bolivian. Spanish speaking <laughs> Bolivian English speaking. <laughs> So, so we are slowly moving forward. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's great. But how much? I mean, how much TTT have you been doing since last we saw we met? Um, we have just been doing TTT within ourselves. Okay. But, but we, I do it actually all the time yeah, because when when we don't use uh, words, we actually use TTT. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, and some people, they are so in bad shape, so you don't need to use words. You just tap mm -hmm. uh, along. Mm -hmm. and, but we, we are experimenting a lot in our group because we have a lot of people and they, they mix and match whatever they feel like. And it does, seems to work no matter what you do. And I actually listened to an interview with a hypnotist and uh, not long ago, and I think the interview may have been, uh, I don't know, five, six, seven years old. And he said he had a competition with a guy who was doing EFT. And he did some shipping sailor things where you do, you know, I don't know what you do, but you do something completely different. And they got exactly the same result. Uh, so it may not be the meridians, you know, we are dependent on. Or it could also be that we have enough meridians in the fingertips, you know. So, so that's the big discussion going on. You know, is it really the meridians or is it? Uh, uh, that's that's it. That's a good discussion and uh, an interesting one. And I'll tell you, uh, depending on who you are asking, if you ask uh, some of those who have been researching this, they will say that you can basically tap on any points over the waist that have lots of nerve endings, and basically you could do it with a banana um, instead of fingertips, and it would still hold results. Because depending on the explanation model you choose to have, uh, it's not, I mean, the meridian model, it will, the meridians will have importance, but if you're looking at the deep potentiation model and biomispherical overload, then it's about sending information to the brain on points that relax and providing a safe space for people. So in that case, whether you're doing havening or tapping or head holding or whatever method you're using, you will get similar results, especially if you're, a, um, you're providing a good calm space for people by being centered yourself. So I would say that that's probably 20% of it. Maggie, what would you say to me though? Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I mean, I agree. <laughs> what we know is that the, what we know is that it works and that's the most important of all of it yeah, yeah. so and then there are different hypotheses i mean theories and and and, um, and also the research showing what what happens when those signals are reaching up to 
the limbic system with the amygdala. So whether it comes through the saving or head holding or, and of course the safe space, that's with all therapy and all kind of meetings that the calmness of the place, creating safe space around to be able to create safe space within him. <laughs> or safety around and safety inside. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's so important. That's super important. Yeah. And that's interesting. It's good that you experiment. Yeah. And how many are you in your group? I mean, we have 400 plus. 400 plus people who have been coming over the years. But when we have a meeting, we may be 10 to 15 who come each week. Yeah. And it's every week, the same place, the same time. Yeah. And so it's and we advertise through meetup. Um, the the diffi most difficult part is to have people even start to test it because it seems they think it seems too simple and it can't work, and uh, you know. So that's the difficult part. Okay. And, uh, have, have you tried? Uh, have you tried leading them into one of the tapping songs? Have I tried what about the tapping summits? The typing songs, song singing, singing with the group. Oh yes, yes. we have done yeah. that. We have yeah. been showing all your stuff from yeah. Africa, and it's fantastic. That's really good, really good, unique stuff. And Christina is going to bring it to Latin America more, and we may start, you know, have to translate to Spanish some of those songs. And and you know that we just finished, like uh, that. You can tell to all of you. We have just. Um, launched or are launching right now a smartphone application in actually in 10 different languages so far it will be in 16 when it's with the next upgrading um, but it is spanish also already because um it has been done so it's called self help for trauma and you'll find it uh, both on for android and for ios so there you can have some um, instructions also already in Spanish. And we have some other stuff also in Spanish, I think. So just yes. write us whatever you know, because since we also work with different language groups, so um, that's very good. And you mean you're going to work in Latin America or with, La with uh, um, Latinos in, 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 uh, in the US? Used of? In both. both. Uh, the idea is both because there is actually like a Nobody is working here with people in Spanish. Yeah. Uh, but the major, our major goal is to be ready to uh, be able to go to South America and okay. Spain. And uh, uh, we find that the TDT is the best method because it's so, like, uh, special for people who have a lot of traumas and. Yeah. I mean, we have our fantastic colleague, a medical doctor in Costa Rica. So she has made actually. I mean, I'm just slow in my mind because I've been driving a car. She has done very much material in Spanish. So we can, if you write us an email, we'll just connect you to Christine Holtois because and Diane um, in in uh, in Costa Rica, and uh, they can help you with everything because they have done videos and materials and they are introducing. TTT into the, the foster child care in Costa Rica and all schools and so they have done a gigantic work already there so you can just check with them I'm sure you could collaborate with them because they're super uh, open-minded people they're also part of the ASAP the, Asso the Association of Comprehensive Energy Psychologists we met them just in Orlando last May and cool. now with the big immigration problem with a lot of Latinos coming on the border and being yeah I know you it's, know that's another thing we're going to investigate see who is doing what already uh, because um, and, yeah and, and uh, I mean the idea to go I was uh, I was doing some research about uh, uh, about the the tapping on the schools uh, just yesterday I spoke with somebody in Ecuador he's feeling that he's working a lot uh, with the the tapping in the schools. So that is a, our major goal, like yeah. to have our all the information and start going there. Good. Yeah. Thank you so much. So thank you. Thank Great. you. Thank you. All right. So how about Gail? Wait, I'll unmute you. And you can try again. You find the unmute button. There you go. So I, um, this is my first webinar with you. I didn't do the first one. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. 
and but I am certified in um, EFT with uh, Amit. Do you know Amit? Yes, uh, we know Amit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was I'm interested really in uh, in the idea of doing it in groups in a safe way. Um, so that's why I'm here to find out about that. I'd like to be able to do it with people who are perhaps at places for um, people who have substance, substance uh, use issues and also uh, in America. And then also I wanted to um, be able to do it with um, people who are experiencing um, the missiles uh, and no, all different things in Israel. Oh, in Gaza. Sorry. In Gaza? In Israel. Israel. Oh, Israel. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it works really, really, really well in larger groups. You do you have our book as a PDF? Gail? Okay. Gail? Par pardon? Do you have our book as a PDF? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh no, no, actually I bought it because I want the Okay. PDF. Beautiful. But it says it, it has a section describing how to work in larger groups. And we also have on resources for resilience of the ASAP humanitarian site. We just put together, I think, 10 videos on how to do humanitarian outreach and work, work with groups. Cool. And they're all free resources. So we can send you links to that after. Oh, thank you. And basically, um, you have a chapter in the book talking about uh, what, what you want to have happen, and this goes for everybody if you're working with a group, safe way of, of working with a group is telling people to connect ever so lightly. Never ask people to disclose anything that they are worried about. Uh, you're at all times considering the safety of the group and every single person in it. We usually have a very light tone when we do these things because we don't find it necessary to be serious. We have lots of humor when we work with groups. So we would, um, maybe either we would use the somatic poem, which is in the book and on the website, where basically you just connect to whatever bothers you in all your senses. And we often do it with music in a group because it's, uh, we do it once where everybody follows, or we do a self-tapping, and then we do a song. And some, a lot of the time when we do a training, we always do people tapping on each other. We find it works oh, really? very well, and it's a big difference compared to just self-tapping. I know there are issues with that in different countries, the US being one. <laughs> but I suggest you try it because it works really, really nicely. Cool, so we will cover a bit of that. Let's get, uh, let's see who else we have here. Marianne. Uh, Marianne, will you tell us what's happened since last? Ah, you're muted, but we will unmute it. Here okay. you go. <laughs> Uh, well, um, as you know, all probably my mom passed away 11 days ago, and I was it was the same day as Donna and um, our Haven and colleagues were coming in and staying with overnight with me and preparing for the conference. So I haven't had much chance to uh, practice, except I thought about uh, when we were doing the Havening at the Havening conference, I thought about the fact that when you when you do the stroking it sort of seems like a heart and I was wondering whether one could actually do slight tapping like this you know just to create a peaceful heart so um, the other thing I thought about was I'd like to bring it also down to Mexico we have friends down in Tijuana uh, she's a uh, teacher's aide and I think the children can benefit from that. And we also go down to the wine country in Val de Guadalupe. So I, I feel that the foreign countries could benefit from not only the havening, but also from the tapping as well, because I don't speak Spanish, I'm learning, but I don't speak Spanish yet. And it's a nonverbal communication that could be very, very effective in just connecting with people. Yeah, so sure. that would be nice to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. And you have some initial contacts already there. Yes, yes. And I also work with uh, veterans every once in a while. I get uh, referred veterans. And um, I also, I'm, you know, trained in crisis counseling. And, and I feel that um, 
also been working with some mothers of addic addicted adult children. And I feel that the mothers are in a constant, absolutely constant uh, post-traumatic stress disorder uh, or anticipatory stress disorder state because they have to take care of their adult children because they don't know when is the next time they're going to save them. I worked with a mother recently. I actually volunteered to work with her because I kind of known her from the um, recovery coaching industry and she had to save her son three times. Uh, so, um, you know, it's, it's very, very applicable to them and they can really, really benefit from self care. So it'd be good to teach them that. Yeah, absolutely. I, that sounds really great. Uh, two reflections on what you just said. Um, when we teach TTT, we always use the same protocol because it's in all the movies, it's in all the papers, it's in the book, it's everywhere. So when we say that it's nice if you, when you teach TTT, if you teach it with the actual points that, that people find everywhere, so they don't, if they find more information online, they won't be going, oh my God, I've been texting the wrong points. <laughs> now, between all of us here, like I said in the beginning, uh, I truly believe that it has very little relevance if you switch the points around or skip a point or you know decide to do a different pattern because it's about so many other things that provide the result it does have to be points um that give a lot of information to the brain so the face uh, over here it has the fingers and on the side these are points that have more neurological connections than others so that's why we would do that uh, i like the idea with the heart it's nice i usually say it's a question mark you know because it goes like uh, yeah. this Exactly. Like that. So, you know, question mark. Um, anything that makes people remember it. Uh, and second point there, when it comes to the mothers, I, have, I don't have a study right now, but I know there's a study that says that what, one of the most stressful things or positions you can be in is a single parent to a child with challenges uh, because it's 24 seven, there's no rest. So you often end up being in some kind of hypervigilant state and the bucket is just slowly filling every day. And it's life and death and it's your child, so it doesn't really matter what age they are. So yeah, they can benefit a lot from that. And it's kind of nice if they do it with their children and their children get to do it for them because a lot of children like to help their parents and this is a safe, structured way of being able to express that. So um, I often, if, if there's a family that needs um, for, for any reason, needs to calm down any member of the family, I always tell the whole family to do it. Yeah, and for cravings too, I think, uh, once these addicted individuals, uh, you know, substance abuse individuals feel the cravings, perhaps they could just do a little self-care and tap on it a little bit just to distract and feel better, you know? There's, so, it works very fine. And, and works you know. really well. There's lots of studies about yeah. that that PETA has done at Bond University. So for cravings, it works fantastically. Mm -hmm. oh, but one thing there, if you're working on people with cravings, and this goes for havening as well, um, if, you're gonna, if somebody's going to see you for help with a craving, ask them to bring the craving to the session. So if somebody is, is saying, I would like to quit smoking, they are not supposed to smoke before they come. They're supposed to come there with the craving because that's what you're tapping on. If the craving isn't there, you're not able to tap on it. So bring your craving to the session. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and what Ulf meant was Peter Stapleton um, at the Bond University in Australia. She has done also studies. So if you look for Peter Stapleton, uh, she has a website where she has mentioned all her, her um, research, which is plenty, both in schools, for those of you who want to work in schools, but also uh, with cravings. Uh, and she is the master of research. Um, we are actually doing, just finishing a study together with her uh, on, the, um, on trauma in um, young guys in the eastern part of Congo that she is administering. So we will soon be... Um, yeah. I just want to also say regarding what was happening before, what uh, I talked about before regarding the children that are being separated from their parents here in the United States. Uh, I learned that some of them have been brought here to Long Island, New York as well. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, there's a trauma network coalescing now and trying to 
uh, do something for these children. So hopefully we can bring it to them as well if they have some meetings and uh, just help those children. Very much so. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much, Marianne. Wonderful. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So yeah. More and more people are uh, joining us. We're doing a short presentation of what's happened since last and what area you're interested in. And we're doing small discussions as we do the presentation. So, Carol, um, would you care to tell us what's going on with you? We see you. But we don't hear you. Ah, we do not hear you. Is there some kind of challenge yeah. here? I think your mic isn't working actually. Uh, ah, if you speak louder, it will now. Very little, very slight, very difficult to hear you. You don't have a headset? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll go past you and meanwhile, if you can write in the chat a little bit about what you've been doing since last, I'll mute you and we'll get you in that way, okay? And we'll go, and we'll go to, Lynn. to Lynn. Hi everyone. Hello. Hi. Um, what have I been doing since last? Well, like I, we were suggesting in the beginning here, it's the last month has been um, pretty full with uh, working with with my dear friend Roderick here, who was diagnosed with an oligodendroglioma brain tumor, and so that's been what we've been doing for the last month and since then he's had surgery and uh, a resection little resection and then he has follow-up therapies coming up uh, the appointments coming up in a couple of weeks with the radiologist and the oncologist so from there we've got more work to do but uh, I did show Roderick the tapping points from our from the recorded session that I watched and he was able to use them uh, throughout his hospital stay and before going into surgery and that was really, really helpful. And I myself had uh, used it while I was driving to back and forth to the hospital and in the evenings and so I plan to take it with us and, and Roderick as well so that when he is doing follow-up therapies which will likely be chemotherapy and radiation and he, and we're in that the place where everyone is feeling anxious and you know surrounded by people that really could use help i hope to be able to help a lot of folks while we're there and um i also work with first responders so i would like to take my what i learn here to be able to work with them as a group show them some simple tools that they can use to simple self-help tools that they can use as a group or at any time oh that's fantastic yeah, that's wonderful hmm. great thank you. can i say um you've been doing some pretty cool things with roderick uh working with combining healing and tapping with metaphors and and different ways of moving metaphorically whatever that tumor felt like uh, into your hands and everything it's it's been some amazing stuff and I think you're basically just both of you are just gonna have to write it down afterwards and, and, and share it because it's a it's a great story the way you've been doing it uh, I just want to say also that Roderick when you're when you're doing self tapping or if you're both tapping or havening uh, now that you're going into chemotherapy uh, and radiation I would I would look at reflectory patterning that is looking at both sides of that area, right? So if you're talking chemotherapy, that's, you know, that's, that's something that's going inside you to bring something out or to make sure that something is clean. So you might be saying, you know, um, if you would be doing this as reflective repatterning, you would be looking at the good side of that and at the bad side of it at the same time, clearing both spaces. So you would be saying, a reflectory pattern, pattern for that is, you know, um, I hate hating chemotherapy. I hate loving chemotherapy. I love hating chemotherapy. I love loving chemotherapy. So you're doing double negotiation with all those all the way to clear the full space. 
And you could do that also in becoming well, you know, um, loving, hating, hating, loving, and hating, hating, loving, loving, getting well or not getting well. Because that way you're evening out the whole investment into outcome and simply finding calm either way. Does that make sense? So anything you want afterwards, if, if you want to, you know, if we do this one-on-one -on -one or just the three of us or whatever, I'm happy, you know, I'm with you any part of the world, anywhere you want to go with it. So we can do sessions for that. But uh, I have a lot of people using, you know, that for, for self-centering and relaxation uh, when they go into treatment. And it helps the healing response enormously. Because otherwise a normal reaction would be having all these ideas about it, which is trying to make all this thing be. So I think you're going to do really, really well with this. Especially since you have that focusing, curious, you know, pioneer attitude that you have. So looking forward to hear how that's going. So that was what we were mentioning was reflective repatterning for those of us. You can always uh, look it up. We can also write it in an email after, or we can write it now in the in the chat, reflective repatterning. So that's um, uh, also another tool. Good, so then we go to who's next? Hello. Melinda? Yeah, Melinda. Melinda, welcome. Hello again from Los Angeles. Uh, not too much new to report. Oh, it's very I difficult to hear you. Can you get close? Well, I'm speaking into my mic thing here. Can you hear me? Can't hear me. So, yeah, we hear you a little bit. Okay. Not very much. Okay, nothing. Oh, too, okay, nothing too new to report except on the family side. I got engaged to be oh, married. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, lots That's of uh, family focus. Yeah, family focus. Yeah. yeah. So you do happy tapping then. Yeah. Very happy. Yeah, very happy tapping. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm, congratulations. Beautiful. Great to hear. Mm. And then, uh, so then we go to Bianca in France. If I'm you're in France. Up. I'm, in, I'm in, my, in Finland. Oh, you're in Finland now. Okay. The sun is not yet set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm in my little paradise. Mm. Um, uh, I've got nothing much to say except that I've muddled through a fire in my house and of course EFT and, and TTT and all that is, is very important to take the stress out mm. of events like that. Mm. And uh, so I'm settling down here now and trying to, yeah, so, but I, I wanted to join. I wasn't sure I could join because of the traveling. But I could, so I'm happy to be with you. Okay. And I'm happy to hear what, what Ulf said just about to, to, to Lynn. I thought it was very interesting. So thank you. Beautiful, great. So we have one more guest here, all the way from India. Special for you all. So please, why don't you tell them how we met and, and <laughs> when it was and what's happened since. Okay, so hi folks. I'm Mita or Dr. Mita, whichever way you like it. Uh, I'm a psychologist and I wasn't one. I was a counselor when I met Ulf and Vanilla. And I met them in New Delhi in India at a conference in JNU. And they were teaching trauma tapping. And I was so taken by these two that I went and searched them out. And I was like, oh my God, who are these people? Because they had so much energy. And I was like, I really need to find out what they do and all of that. And I added them on Facebook. And there's Frederick, which I've not met and spoken yeah. to. So, yeah. And uh, my journey began then with tapping. And I've been using it, well, to be honest, not every day. But I have been diligent in my practice for the last seven years. And I've helped many people with it. Um, I do a lot of work with trauma, with depression, with anxiety, panic, uh, family therapy, so it really comes handy. It's a little tool and I'm going to use Ulf's analogy here in my toolbox. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm very inspired by the work they do. Yes. Yeah, I'm, very, <laughs> yeah, I'm very super happy that you are here, you come to Stockholm, the whole way from New Delhi, because yes. that's where we met in New Delhi, <laughs> and so at the conference. So that's fantastic. So much welcome. Thank mm. you very much. Yeah, it's, oh, 
So, or if, um, yeah, there is one person more that is supposed to join, but I don't know if he's coming. Let's see the comment also. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's good. So thank you so much for sharing all that. Um, so, uh, and this is, for some of you, this is the first, um, it's not the second of two, but the first of two, um, but the second. So that's why it, we will, uh, so what we asked, um, those who have been with us before, for this time was to bring somebody you can actually do tapping for, because as uh, we mentioned before, it is we consider and have seen so much um, result in doing tapping for somebody, meaning on somebody else's body. And um, that's why we ask, and since for some of you that is a complication, because as therapists in the US, you're not allowed to touch, um, but you are allowed to touch family and uh, also um, uh, friends, isn't it? Uh, because it is allowed uh, when it's not coming to profession. So um, what we have seen is that it's constantly more efficient of different reasons, that the person doesn't have to think about of doing the tapping. You can center yourself and be with ever bring out or, or, or back as much as you need. There's somebody caring for you, like a prayer for you. And touch, I mean, good touch is healing touch. We all are born out of touch. Otherwise, we would not have developed our brain and our attachment if we were not held by our parents. And so it all comes to that there is another element into doing tapping for somebody else. Yeah. So when we, when we do it in, in groups, as we were talking about, uh, like, like we said, we would usually start by explaining a little bit about uh, stress, what are the symptoms, so that people can recognize it and say, oh yeah, I, I, you know, I, oh, I didn't realize that maybe bed wetting and falling out of the bed and nightmares and chronic pain and headache and constipation and strange behavior, hypervigilance, startle reflex, all these things can actually be related to stress and trauma. And while we're talking about addiction and cravings, there's so much research uh, that shows that more or less 80-90% of people who have some kind of substance abuse have untreated trauma um, uh, or what we call adverse childhood experiences. So basically by going for the trauma response first, uh, it can actually loosen up a lot of things so that you don't have to look into the other ones. Um, so the first thing would be, you know, uh, just a lead tapping like we all know and did last time. And the second thing would be maybe singing a song or having people tap each other. So since a lot of you brought somebody, I think that's what we're going to do now, isn't it? Mm. We're going to do a tapping on each other and see whatever experience that brings to us. So I suggest that uh, you just sit in a way so that you can tap each other. And um, I will leave room here for Vanilla and Nita to tap. And meanwhile, just remember this, it's in the book. We don't sit in front of people, right? Because we don't want to confront them. We don't want to be in their way. Uh, plus it's not, it's actually not very nice to have a person sit straight in front of you with their legs wide open, regardless if you know them or not. It's kind of blunt. So we recommend sitting next to each other like two ships passing in the night. But it's also because if you're doing it with somebody who goes into a flashbulb memory or a flashback, if they have defensive rage, they want to be able to just run away, feel free to, to move out. Well, just the feeling of having space in front of you makes a big difference. It's also easier to reach the person when they are sitting, uh, when you're sitting close as two ships passing rather than being in front of somebody. Uh, I know, uh, Madeleine, that we, we, Madeleine and I were just at the, at the, at the conference in Havening, uh, last weekend in New York and at this conference, Marianne, sorry, Marianne and I were there and, and on this com in this conference people were sitting like boom in front of each other and I guess it's always taught like that and I know I mentioned it, right, didn't I Marianne? Yeah, it was also, I was in, yeah, sorry. I'll unmute you. There you are. Uh, yeah, I think Paul McKenna was the uh, spreading the legs in front of the veteran but I was wrapped with attention with that though. So because the veteran really had a lot of changes. And I guess he was very willing to do anything to get rid of his post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah, and that can be, but I mean, when we're teaching it, because I also, we were, the first Havening conference I was um, in, in London, and Paul McKenna did the same thing, and that's already four years ago, and I mean, for me, it's just, you know, it's just, no, no, you know, it's the way he's sitting with his, you know, it is very confrontative, yeah, and if yeah, you're working yeah. with a woman, you know, it's like, uh, it's like out of the, you know, out of my universe. So I think it's, when, I mean, when we practiced on each other, though, you know, we were sitting side to side. Yeah, know, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's very good because it is really, as you say, also, it, it is much easier to reach and it becomes more like a treatment instead of you approaching somebody, you know, because that's not it. It is a treatment. You do it on the, on the side. I know there are these sofas that are shaped like an S. You've seen them. You sit like when you are newly, I mean, met, you can sit one seat that direction, other. But you can actually speak very well without, you know, being too intimate, um, which brings out that element of being too intimate also, that you're sitting beside somebody. So uh, we think it is very good. Then, of course, I mean, for us, we do trainings, whether it's under a tree, on a bench somewhere, or, you know, on a bus or whatever. So it's not always you have two chairs that you can position like that. And then you just, you know, sometimes people will be sitting on benches, benches, they just turn to the next person and they will do it like that. So it all depends on where you are. Like we say here, uh, it depends. It's like the answer to most of the questions. It depends whether you are, you know, um, if you have the possibility, you know, uh, of doing it. I also have to say that at this conference last weekend, I think there's going to be a video available. Paul did a wonderful, Paul McKenna did a wonderful Havening session for post-traumatic stress on a war veteran. It was extremely elegant and it really worked out nicely. So, so apart from the sitting, which we think for safety's sake, it's better to do the other way, it was a good example. And you could interchange Havening for, for tapping in that session and have more or less high base in the same result because they're coming from the same group. But the structure of this session was very elegant. So I can recommend you to look at that. I think it will, I think it's gonna, I don't, I haven't heard exactly what they're doing with it, but I think it's gonna be released uh, well, at least I hope so. It depends on if the if the, the war vet has given his approval. I'm not sure if he has. I think people got a lot out of your your lecture as well, really, and it loosened them up too, and you know, lightheartedness. So you need that at a conference like that. Lightheartedness is great. So uh, do we have Christina trying to say something here? Yes, I was working with a Muslim woman. We were sitting on either side of a table and I asked her to, to sit like you, you know, uh, recommend. And we started tapping and I touched by accident, I touched her leg. And it was a no, no. I mean, it was really, I made some major, you know, so we have to be very careful with people from other cultures who may be uh, too sensitive. You know, you can't be too close to them. So I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, and again, it depends, you know, because I've been working with people from all religions of the world, you know, and it all depends on the person, whether you can touch or not touch. Yeah, and, and if you, if it's, uh, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you can say from India, isn't it? I mean, we are not really big on hugging, <laughs> but we're getting there. Um, I can, I mean, my mom didn't like hugging. She never grew up with it. But uh, I can say for my niece now, who's like third generation, she loves hugging. It's changing with time. I think it's very yeah. personal. It's very personal and very individual. So we just say it's, there is no yes and no. Yeah. It depends on, on where you are and, and who they are. And often, anyway, you find it. You know, and often just ask, is it okay or is it not okay? And then people will answer yes or no. It's just, you know, then you solve it. If I can just say, yes, yes. it depends on your sector because they're very strict about the protection of children. Or some, you, you yeah. Know, it, 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 it has to be a family or what? Yeah, they're not very happy with that. And it all depends because in Afghanistan they do groups of women, widows, and also, yeah. and they're all Muslim, yeah. and in Syria the same. So I think it really depends yeah. on you know the situation, the situation. and the yeah. and the group of people yeah. where what they are used to. Yeah, I think it goes for Mormons as well, Christian Mormons. Could do we ask the yeah. guys in the U.S. because that's yeah. where the Mormons are mostly. Yeah, mostly. Well, never mind. So usually, we, uh, when we're going to do a, a facilitated uh, tapping, we usually sit down, there's two ships passing, we ask permission, we offer, we don't insist, and we show on ourselves, saying, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm going to need to be touching you here, 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 
and here. Is that all right? And uh, once you get the permission, it's fine to move forward. So I'll, I'll move over and leave place for Vanilla and Mita to do one of their most perfect sessions ever in the history of tapping. So, and the rest of you can just move around that so you're sitting comfortably. Yeah, I mean, you do your tapping now, so you move around so that you sit and do your, your, your couple of tapping. You want to sit here? That yeah. for instruction for for instruction purposes. So you're all set. Good. Okay. So um, what we do is that um, I mean now you all are you know all of you are used to doing this kind of of. Of treatments, otherwise, in other circumstances, we would just do some explanation of, you know, making people do some kind of of theater, explain what it is, and 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 saying that, and sometimes even saying it, it looks very simple, like you said, it looks very simple. So some will take it as a joke, but just try, you know, and see. And like we said, I um, touch these parts of the hand and the face and the chest, and is that okay with you? Okay, so that's very good. And then, optionally, um, we'll say also, if you like, you close your eyes because, you know, the eyes are very active and makes the, 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 the brain go on, on, on a lot of activity. And it also makes you um, less attentive to things around. But for some who do not trust the world at all, they will still want to be with the eyes open. So that's why I say, if you like, you close your eyes. And for most people, they will do, but for some, they will not because they feel like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen, you know, or they never felt safe anywhere. And if it's, and then, then little by little, and some will close their eyes after a while. So that is, um, and then this, to think about whatever, that's our shortest explanation when you explain this to somebody is, think about whatever bothers you, ever so lightly, while I'm doing this tapping on these points. And that's all actually what is needed of spoken to explain it to somebody. Just think about it just a little bit. You just need to touch it a little bit because the, 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 the mind and the unconscious mind knows directly what it is that you need to, to work with if you are able to connect to it. Especially when you work with people who are highly stressed and traumatized. You, you know, you don't have to find ways to connect because some are even connected 24 seven. It's, it's there constantly. So, um, so, if you like, close your eyes and then um, we will start. So we can just do it together. I'm just holding her hand in my hand and then doing the tapping on the side of the hand. And again, like 10, 15 times, you know, and by now I don't really count anymore, but it is like doing it on the side of the hand. And then placing down. And then when it comes up here, we say that I'll touch your forehead and then do what we call the crown pull, you know, just with the thumbs, preparing the forehead, which is also bringing some of the stimulation of the, of the frontal cortex, some blood circulation. After that, just the tapping, just there, the, about the nose. And there's some very strange sound. Then just continuing and following the eyebrow, so just like when you go for massage, that nobody will, you know, go from one point to another, but showing that I'm going here now to the point outside the eyes, because then the person will feel that, aha, that's where she's going. And then again, continuing to under the eye, on the high high point of the, of the cheek. And then we do with one hand, so then you can hold, I hold a little bit on the side, on the, on the cheek. Yeah, and then do the tapping under the nose. And then go around the mouth, and then holding a bit here, because sometimes if the, the, the um, chin gets very loose, it feels uncomfortable. So you can just hold a little, little bit with the thumb under the chin. And then down to the chest. And here we do, you know, not only this, the specific point of 
K27, or slavery point, but all over the chest, which also relaxes the other muscles that are often tense when somebody is in stress. It helps to open up the chest. So we do it all over. And then when it comes to the, to the point under the arm, you have the person to lift the arm. Now, Mita knows exactly where I'm going, so she lifts it herself. Otherwise, you just hold the arm and do it under here. And then while you're on that side, you can have it like a, like a left hand greeting. And then the fingers will be in your, in your palm. And then it's easy to tap, starting with the little finger on the inside of the fingers. I mean, you're on the points, but I keep saying this anyway. And then just continuing. So then you have the support of your own hand. Just finishing off with a with a thumb. You can actually hold it also, right? I take it like a, a grip with my other hand, and then placing down the hand again. And then we do this the chest point. Sorry, the whole chest or the gorilla gorilla tapping once again. And we do that because we see that many, you know, like if a child or or an adult also, but more with children, it's more used. So to just sit by the bed and just tapping a little bit on the chest. Many would just fall asleep because it has such a relaxation. It activates the relaxation response very easily here. And then we take the, her hand in my hand, like you know, closing her hand in between my hands and doing the breathing. So you ask the person to breathe in with your nose, like a deep breath, and then holding it for a little while. And then breathe out. And once again, you breathe in. Hold it and breathe out. And here we breathe together because for some it's difficult to breathe. And also assisting with the, with the hand and the, and, and the arm so that there is a physical movement also. <clears throat> and after that, you will just resume on the hand again. So we do it and then you can shift to the other side. It's not necessary, but if, you, if it's possible for you to reach, you can do the other side. So then you do again on that outside, the, what they call still the karate spot or on the side of the hand. And sister and then a bit of the pulling or the crown pull over the forehead. And then tapping about the nose, following the eyebrows to the outside of the eye, and then under the eye, and then under the nose, and then under the mouth, above the chin, down to the chest. And here it is like very light drumming all over the chest. And then under the arms, under here, over here. Very good. And then again, just placing her hand in mine, starting with the little finger, and then going for the next, for the pink finger. Middle finger, or the long finger, whatever you call it. The index. And the thumb. And then pressing back. And then again, the final gorilla tapping, chest tapping. And then again, we take the breathing. So you take the hand between your hands and then you breathe in. Hold breath for a while and then breathe out. Like a sigh of relief. It is like the in breath is through the nose. Hold the breath and out breath with the mouth.
And then when finishing, we often say that you can stay with your eyes closed for a little while while you sit holding the hand because then you keep the connection and the person can feel, you know, like uh, observing or noticing. <laughs> so that's what we say, like, you know, just notice what it feels like on the inside, you know, or in the mind, or you can assist the person to, you know, go from the, from the head and the face and down the shoulders through the body, the chest and the stomach and how to sit on the chair and the arms and the hands and legs and down to the feet just sitting you know observing for some it is perhaps the first time they feel relaxed in a very long time <laughs> oh sorry yeah, no. <laughs> so just by sitting there and keeping this connection has you know continues this connected which is the difference when you do the tapping for somebody that you have this connection also and connecting is healing, you know, as we all know that we feel, I mean, this social engagement that we are, you know, together. We feel that you are together, not only we're together in the room, but we actually are connected. And then, um, and then we can say, and when you feel like it, you know, you can just open your eyes and then, then you're there. Excuse me. Good morning, And also energy. Morning. 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 Or maybe some picking up. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah, and then of course now um, I didn't ask for a, a sound in the beginning, which of course you can do um, from zero to ten, and then checking after, yeah. or just asking. So, so you know, so what was your experience? Very relaxing. Very relaxing. Yeah. Just like all the thoughts come to me. It was like meditation. Okay, <laughs> and that's wonderful. So just that is fantastic that somebody, whether it's, you know, feeling that kind of relaxation. And when it came to, did you think of something special? Or I did. You did. And, and in relation to that, did you feel some difference? or I just forgot about it. You just forgot about it. It was just done there. Yeah. So then what we, how we finish is like, Congratulations, because it is like, I mean, we assist, but it is the own, of course, the healing power. We are not fixers. It is the healing power of the other person itself. We just assist a bit in, in, in doing it. So that's it. So thank you so much for your, for your confidence <laughs> and you. for, for letting me have you here. So you. that's very good. Hmm. Great. And I'm going to continue sneezing now. Yeah, I'm going to do your sneezing. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. <laughs> Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. So, so now we can hear some um, of the comments from your side, what the person you have been working with is experiencing, or yourself also, of course. I find myself very healing, nurturing myself, doing the tapping for somebody. It is like, wow, it's really a connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi. Oh, Carol, you're with us. What did I you do? Reinvent the microphone? I changed the computer. Ah. Yeah, the image is much better now. Good. 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 Um, I loved how you uh, taught that. I loved uh, the way that you build it up. And I liked the, the holding of the hand while doing the breathing. Really beautiful. Really good. Really. Uh, and I really like that you point out that that we assist and it's the person's system, the person's neurology that generates the changes. It's really lovely. I like that this, I've never done that broad tapping like that before. It was really good. It's really nice. Much, much nicer than the, 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 that I've learned from TFT. Yeah. Are oh, you also trained in TFT? That's me too. I'm a TFT yeah. trainee. Or, so. yeah. okay. going, back, going back to what you were saying about the havening position, we actually brought that up in the very first year about sitting to the side and actually determining which side people are more comfortable and really going level with people. So it would be quite interesting to ask Ron the reason that they continue to work straight on yeah yeah you should do that yeah that's cool yeah we should do that I, di I didn't want to bring it up at the conference because there might be no reason or there might be a specific reason but we i mean we did talk about it um the advantage of not sitting straight in front of somebody especially when it's it's mixed sex i've been banging on about it for five <laughs> years let's go you and me let's do it <laughs> come on <laughs> thank you thank you so much carol so, um, I wonder if we have our, um, who else did, um, Melinda wanted to say something. 
please go ahead. Yes, um, can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you very well. <laughs> okay, yeah, it was interesting because that, that was my fiance, Brian, I was working on, and I've done a lot of EFT and advanced EFT work on him, and he knows very well what that feels like. And so when I did this, he said, oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, so that's a keeper. That's a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> very that's nice. Wonderful. Okay, good. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Thank you so much. And greetings to your fiance. I saw him just slightly behind you and then he disappeared again. So I didn't. <laughs> good. Thank you. And um, what about Christina and... Um, sorry. Did you do the tapping? Christina? We'll unmute you. Hang in there a sec. There you go. Now we hear you. Yeah. Uh, I also, I love this. This is, makes you so relaxed. We almost fell asleep, both of us here. Yes. <laughs> so. We have to grab some water because we were like this. <laughs> also, this between is very, very good. As you say, you fall asleep almost. Yeah. I really like plus that you said. Close the eyes. Close the eyes is better because, you know, there are different opinions there. And I agree, I always almost close the eyes. Um, but if you are nervous, you might want to keep your eyes open. That's yeah. a very good point as well. Uh, the, yeah, the only thing is I don't like to tap 15 times. I may cut it, cut it a bit. Are you in a hurry? And also, <laughs> you to hold your hands when you do this. Um, Sorry, you, what did you say? I, I like if you hold, tap with somebody, yeah. you hold your hand like that. Yeah. That's that's very good. That's very good. Yeah. If I tap on myself, I am using my fingertips all the time. I don't really feel the need to do too much of this fingertip stuff. Um, that's my point. My uh, What's your take on it? Okay. And yeah. Very relaxing. Very relaxing. Yeah. We were like, <laughs> yeah, my, my eyes were like this in my nose and very relaxing. Very, very relaxing. Yeah, I took a mini nap. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd, like, I'd like to add some things there for those of you who, who maybe have, have not looked into the, neuro, the neurology of this. Um, when you are stressed, the blood actually leaves your frontal cortex. So the crown pool actually massages blood back into the part of your brain that allows you to get back online. Mm. Uh, also, um, your eyes not the eyes in themselves, but the actual processing of visual information is the most intensive sense that you have in your body. You're processing 10 million bits of information per second if you would speak computer language. Maybe that doesn't say that much, but in relation, hearing uses maybe 200,000 uh, bits per second. So there's a big difference between processing visual information and auditive or smell or, or, uh, or gustatory, like taste information. So we did this, um, we, we put an EEG uh, cap on Gunilla and we did some tapping to see what would happen with her brain. But one of the most amazing things was that when she closed her eyes, the whole brain goes woof and just closes down certain areas. So you get so much more relaxation and focusing capacity. So to help people go into themselves, just closing the eyes, even so, even shortly, does so much. It changes the whole structure of how the brain is actually operating. Um, so I can't stress that enough. That's a, that's a, or calm that enough. That's that's a really good thing. So we usually tell people, close your eyes if you feel okay with it. If not, you can leave them open. Now there is one in between thing you can do if people are kind of control freaks or analytical or hypervigilant and want to stay with their eyes open, you can ask them to simply defocus their eyes. So if you look at a finger in front of you, you'll see that finger. Now you try doing that, put your finger in front of you and look at it. So if you do that, and then you relax the muscles in your eyes so that you see several fingers, that is defocusing your eyes. When you do that, you actually deactivate the sympathetic nervous system. It's the opposite of tunnel vision. So if you want to relax with your eyes open, just defocusing will actually put you in a lighter state of trance immediately. 
Yeah, I mean, that is in some of the meditation techniques. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's just yeah. gazing, you know, what do you call it? Not gazing, is it? Not gazing. So that is, I mean, that's very good. And, and because for me, it was also, I mean, but the first time I was in a situation where people didn't want to close their eyes was actually in a country where there had been so much intelligence, you know, that they said we didn't even trust our shadows during the time of that, that person who was ruling the country. So they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't trust anything. It wasn't that they didn't trust the situation. So it was just, they were so long time keeping watching, you know, what's happening around. But then after, I don't know, Little by little, they would also close their eyes. But in the beginning, it's like, oh, no, I will never close my eyes when I'm awake. You know, it's like, yeah. So, great. Thank you so much for the comments. Wonderful. I'm happy that you're so relaxed. Now, you look very relaxed in that sofa. Like, yeah. So, good. Thank you. So, let's go to Lynn. Hi, I'm going to let Roderick speak to his experience. Very much. Perfect. Uh, can everyone hear me? Is hear you very well. Okay. So the brief sort of um, or quick version of this is um, a lot of what I was sort of thinking about during this was the anxiety about the loss of um, sort of fine dexterity that's happened in my hands since the surgery. You know, being a musician, being all that, it's, you know, it's, uh, it certainly has led to some contemplation. I can write with this hand, so you know, it's all fine. But so when we were doing this, um, I was just focusing on just the overall anxiety of just how I'm going to do this. And what I found was that towards the end of the tapping session, I started to feel, or sorry, um, the, the sensory sort of seizure-like symptom that I was having prior to prior to um, actually going under surgery, which was really quite interesting because, well tune's not there anymore. Well, you know, 99% of it is no longer in my, in my head. So what I thought was really interesting was that just it's remembrance is natural experience. And so, so that was just what, um, but I, I mean, the, the symptom is dissipated now. I, I'm not experiencing it anymore, but it was quite interesting that what I was thinking about actually came up as an actual symptom. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Wonderful. Thank you. Great. Mm. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, so who else? Yeah, Bianca, please. You are uh, yeah, yeah. unmuted. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. I thought that was very, very nice. It reminded me all of the little tricks because I'm a I'm a trainer in EFT, so I have to put it around again to do the EFT. There were lots of things I thought were very good. I, of course, I'm, I'm a troubleshooter, so when people don't want, they say, no, they don't want to be tapped on, do you, what do you do? You don't tap on them. So but what do you do? No, I mean, then they have to tap on themselves. I mean, I, I never insist anything, but I never experienced it in 11 years of time. Okay, but you know that uh, first we all started, I am trained by Gary Craig's method. Uh, we started tapping on people and then suddenly we are all tapping mirror. Yeah. And it works very well. And when I got people who are very, very doubtful and they don't want to tap, and I'm talking about EFT, I say, don't worry, just follow me. And they do, eyes open. And what you said about the focusing or defocusing of the eyes is very in interesting because I feel that when I have a chance to do that with people that I meet, you know, not, not that I treat, but I meet on, on my way and I say, you are in a bad spot, can I help you? They, they have sort of a look in their eyes, which is not, they, they're not looking at me. They're looking at something else and they feel, I feel that they're very profoundly in themselves and that might be what you call defocusing. I don't know what you think about that. I think that when I see that in people's eyes, I think that they, well, it, they do calm down, the, the problem goes away. So uh, I, I, I feel that that is a very great experience with me when that has happened to me. I think, oh, wow, people have got this look of going profoundly into somewhere where I don't know where they are. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. 
Yeah. And, and the thing is this, when you're defocusing your eyes, you're basically directing your visual attention anywhere except in front of you. Yeah, inside. I thought they were inside themselves. Usually they'll be inside. I mean, but it's, it's also, uh, it's also used by people who have to stay awake for a very long time. Uh, there was this um, pilot called Bertrand Picard. He was, he had, he wanted to fly a plane around the earth that didn't need to refuel. So it was um, solar cells on the wings. And he trained with hypnosis to find himself in a state where he would be relaxing and awake at the same time, kind of a trance state, where he would actually go with deep focused eyes and he could go for hours and hours and hours completely still without going too low so that he fell asleep. Because if he did fall asleep, he wouldn't be recharging the plane properly. That would be sad. Yeah. But it's so really I, yeah. I, think it's, I think it's very useful. And it also what happens is that when you defocus your eyes, you actually relax your brain, even though your eyes are open, because you're not processing the 10 million bits anymore. And you also get an enhanced peripheral vision. Yeah, that's what I think. So. Yeah. That's which, what I call it. Which is nice and safe and the opposite. Yeah. 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 And it's really interesting what you're saying about, about that. When you ride a horse, you use defocused vision and the horse calms down, presumably because you're moving to your... Uh, parasympathetic system right yeah really cool and as soon as you go into focused vision then the horse can get anxious yeah. you, look at, you know if you look at something with that phobial vision the horse will actually you know might be galloping along a straight line you're defocused and everything run, run, run. and you suddenly sort of spy somebody or something you look at it the horse will shy away and all you've done is or all you think you've done is move your eyes yeah. you've changed your whole neural system and your chemistry yeah and most probably if you had a hrv heart, heart rate variability sensor you probably have elevated your pulse uh, raised it slightly and changed the rhythm of your heart because that's that's what will happen when you focus your eyes yeah and your brain yeah yeah uh, I, I, I don't want to really want to f forget it I, it's not so important it is um, do you ever say, when you do this um, thing showing where you go, do you ever say under the eye, under the nose, under the chin, or do you leave I mean, it? Out? I almost never do it. I could say, I mean, here I'm coming to touch your forehead if the person already closed their eyes. You know, it's like, now I'm touching because that's where you start. But that's why I'm saying that you follow them. You know, you, I don't lift my hands. I go there, and then there, and then there, and then go down. You know, it is like... So that the person knows, and then you take the arm, you know, and just like the fingers, so that you are with the person all the time, not, you know, like tick, 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 and then, boop, 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 and then, and then here, oh, and then here. No, because it is like a sequence, and it is a flow. I mean, you can call it a, like a flow for me. So it is, but I never say, now I go here, now I go not go there. Of course, if it was somebody who really, you felt needed it or something. I think it's good to leave the person in that meditative state because I think that is very healing. That it is something. Yeah. That it is, you know, you're talking in another way, you know, soul to soul, not through those spoken words that we think are always needed, but it is another kind of communication. So that's my take on it. But I don't say that's the truth or anything, that that's how it is for me. And, and, I, and I will add to that. Uh, if it is a person that seems hesitant to close their eyes, it's because they're vigilant. So they'll probably feel a little less safe. In that case, I do tell them before I test their forehead and I tell them maybe on the first round and skip it on the second round just so that they know what's going on. But that would be from case to case because I agree completely with Gunilla. The optimal state is where the person is safe enough to close their eyes and feel relaxed and not really bother anymore. And it's a, when you go to massage therapy, usually the therapist never always keeps a hand touching you, regardless of what they're doing, so that there's always contact. Yeah. And I think that's really nice. Does that answer the question for you? Uh, yes, and I got one more question, of course. Uh, no, one more point to say, uh, we, we EFT tappers do a lot, a lot, a lot on phone or on Zoom or on Skype or whatever. And then, of course, you can't get touched, so you have to get around. You have to get around this problem, if it is a problem. And that is why it. I usually start 
patiently saying there, 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 there. Then I forget it and you say you just tap. And it works very well because people take their own rhythm and we get into rhythm anyway. I don't, uh, you haven't said that you can do TTT by distance. Can you do it? Have you, have you been asked to do it? Is it possible, thinkable? I, I, I do it a lot. I do it all the time. Yeah, it's easy. I mean, you just explain it. Just exactly okay. the way you said. I mean, usually I tell people just relax and follow what I'm doing. Just look at me. And if I have a video, you know, I will see what they're doing. They will follow me. They will simply be looking because it's just like doing it in front of somebody. Uh, yeah, same, same. It's the same same. And if there is no video connection, yeah, yeah. if they are closing their eyes, I will be telling them what point to go to. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and if it's on the phone, I will definitely tell them. And it's, I also, but on the phone, it's necessary that they have a headset or a hands free, or they won't be able to follow. Um, in my experience, and I think I'm not the only one, um, the phone uh, con contact is more strong, more powerful than the visual. Because the visual people, of course, they are more technically um, interested, do I do the right thing and things like that. Phone is much more private. And with, I, I think that the intuition and the listening, the real listening, profound listening both ways, is very profound in telephone. And I always try to tell my people when they do these things that to favor phone. But of course they prefer to have visual because it's more in, in our time. No, I don't think it's that. It's just that people are different. Some are more visual, some are more auditive. I mean, it is like some take instructions much more easy just by watching, perhaps not even hearing what you're saying and others. But I think, I mean, it all comes back to this. It all depends. So maybe it does like that. But for you, it might be like that, you know. I can tell you one thing. I'm the, le I'm the least bit auditive, really. I am not at all auditive at all. And that has made a lot of problems in school for me. But doing the phone work has got nothing to do with that it's got to do with some connection i it's i don't remember what happened in in my sessions yeah anyway, so I, I don't think it's an auditive or visual i'm much more visual because i love painting and things like that yeah no i mean and actually I mean, actually, that I can actually no no person is one or the other we switch systems yeah. all the time and if we would measure it you would go from audio auditive to visual several times like a pendulum during this session uh, just every time you blink you enhance your auditive capacity and it's also shown that at uh, the moment you uh, relax one sense you will expand another sense so if you close your eyes your auditive your ears will be bigger that's why radio reaches more people in a way in a personal like you're saying because you're not watching mm -hmm. you're not processing visual information so the hearing will be more but at the same time, every single person can be depending on what they just came from doing. If somebody just came from taking visual instructions in something, they will be more active in the visual part of their brain. And if they came from listening to the radio, to listening to the phone, they are already in a very listening mode. So we, we just say, it. We, be, we, we truly and honestly believe that people are, all people are capable of switching between all systems and what is right or wrong uh, in one situation will be wrong or right in another situation. That's good. Thank you so much, Bianca. We're gonna go, and so we, because I see the time is like, um, yeah, so. But it's good, thank yeah, you for that. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Excellent. So, do we have anybody yeah. else, uh, Gail, yes, who wants to say something, please. No. No. I don't, really, I don't really have anything to say. I guess I'd, I'd like to, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Okay. I guess I'd like to find out more about doing it in schools, but I think we have not a lot of time left. Yeah, but give yeah. your comment. I no, mean, give me a comment. I mean, if you want, if, do you want some ideas on how, how it can be done in schools? Yes. Yeah, because I guess um, whenever I'm, with people that are doing it in a group, they always have emotional assistance and I don't have anybody to work with me that could help somebody if they had an reaction and I'm very concerned about that. Has that, has that ever happened? It never happened to you? No. 
No. It, 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 yeah, it, it has never ever happened to us that people have an abreaction. Okay. We all the time we say, okay. connect ever so lightly to whatever that is and just follow us. And we have a light mood and a smile and we provide safety uh, by being calm and centered. And actually, I mean, when I've done it in schools, first, we don't say anything about connecting to anything because we start practicing just to learn the, the points. So if somebody has something running, they will have it treated just by without focusing on anything, you know. And then optionally, you say, if there's something you want to focus on, then you take. But in school, never. Because, I, I mean, I've been working in schools with six years and, and you know, very young guys. And never mention anything about problems. Say this is a focus exercise, or this is relaxation, or we have teachers who have been doing it, teaching it to kids, and then the kids have been going home to 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 treat their parents for a way of earning money for a project they were working with, and and they get got diplomas for learning it, and then they could go home and 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 treat their stressed parents. So I mean, there are all these things way, but you don't have even to mention that it has anything to do with school unless it's students are older and it is really an issue like this Pita, Dr. Pita Stapleton we were mentioning. She's been yes. doing it to, to show the difference in uh, what you say, uh, test anxiety and showing that test anxiety has gone down dramatically after using um, tapping and also some what were the other aspects she was looking at, Ex test anxiety. Yeah, and then seeing actually that the grades go up because the less test anxiety, the more of your brain will actually be active and working, like we were talking about the frontal cortex, which all like de what to say downregulate when you are stressed, and especially when you're traumatized, it ha almost has no activity. I mean, sorry to say, and that's why the cognition is not very uh, well functioning. So you can do it in all different ways, and if you have specific ideas, again, just write us because. We have been almost everywhere in all different kinds of situations. So if it is some specific school or some specific age you want to work with, you can also connect you to somebody who has been working with that age group or, you know, or to PETA uh, or somebody also in, in the Czech Republic, there was this project in school and, you know, in, and there in Costa Rica, uh, Christine Hothois uh, has been doing it so much like in schools. So just check with us about experiences and I'm sure you can work it out. But, and I'd like to add to that, that uh, if, if I were to do it in a school, I would do it as a morning exercise every morning. Just say, this is just a centering exercise that we're doing together. And we usually add to the tapping something which is called blowout, which is when you reach both hands out, breathe in, clench your fist, pull down and breathe out. And if you do this three times, with a group, with a classroom group of people, the very tense nerves, uh, will release because you're using adrenaline, you're lowering cortisol, you're evening out the carbon dioxide in the stomach, you're getting a better oxygen balance. And those two things, um, if you do them just in the beginning of the day or every Monday or every day during the week, there will be a big difference in those kids. And when you're working with children, um, usually when after the age of seven or eight, they might not be so keen to tell you what happened during the day in school, especially if something was going on that wasn't so fun, regardless of what role they played in that. So they'll come home and uh, when you put them to bed, uh, you can just tell them, so how was school today as you tap them with a lying in the bed? And whatever happened that day will run through their head and they will connect to it. So just by saying, and how was school, you don't need to add, get the answer because the neurological connection is active and the tapping will help them to go to sleep and absorb that. Yeah, and I've been working in some schools and then what we've been doing is using some of the resources that you find on our website. For example, the, this cartoon video that, I, have you seen it, Gay? Yes. Uh, yeah, which is also on that app, the smartphone app we were mentioning in the beginning, which is now ready. I mean, just showing that, just explaining a bit that sometimes we get stressed, you know, there's lots in school and things happening. You don't have to say and just show it and then you do it together with that with that winky with this this cartoon um, character um, which is a very easy way to do it and has nothing to do and because we never say the word therapy because we don't go into therapeutic situation I mean and what you say it's therapeutic um, yeah it's not therapy it's relaxation it's not therapy 
no, it's not therapy. It is relaxation. So, you know, so that is a very good way of, of doing it and saying this is relaxation. It will make you focus better in school. It will make you less nervous in front in, in before um, tests um, and these kind of things. And everybody wants that. You know. Wonderful. Thank you. So, yeah, happy to, you know, keep emailing, you know, if you have questions or thoughts or reflections or come up with some, you know, whatever it is, just email us and we're happy to answer. Okay, great. Yeah? Yeah, the circle. That's great. Yeah. And the weather is actually really good. Yeah. We do it out in the open. That's I can't one. hear her. Yeah, she, 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 sorry. So I'm going to use it in the goddess circle. I do a goddess circle every month in the winter time in India because it's nice and pleasant. We do it in a nice car. So, I'm going to so do what do you do? Uh, well, we choose a goddess every month. We mm -hmm. talk about it. I teach meditation. Uh, some it, there's a different agenda every time. Mm -hmm. So we do chakra balancing and listen to their issues. It's like group therapy, you know. Yeah. Right? But it is. Yeah, and we give healing to Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. so. Wonderful. Bits and pieces of everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Hmm. Marianne, do you have anything to add? Wait, wait. wait. <laughs> wait <or? laughs> no? Yes. I was just curious because Yanda Van Zant has a program over here where she actually works with traumatized families. And she did a variation where she was actually pressing on the fingers themselves, on both sides of the fingers. Have you seen that? I mean, I often do that, actually, in my treatment. I often do that because I'm also a shiatsu therapist. So, you know, I, and I'm a Thai massage therapist. So I do something with that because it's also the same points. And it makes actually good stimulation, you know, because it is more, I mean, it's very precise. So that's what, you know, I sometimes do kind of often, actually. Um, yeah. So, so, yeah, that's very good. And I mean, there are these other ways that people, there's something called, um, um, yeah, another program where they do just holding the finger for, for calming. Yeah. Just holding, just take one hand around, the, especially the, the index finger here. Yeah, yeah, just because that makes, it's like making yourself feel safe in a way, just, you know, just holding it. So there are so many. And for us, it is like, even if it's TTT we, we share, we add everything in that, that works. You know, if somebody comes up with something, so, I mean, also write us an email and say, yeah, but I like that you say with this, like the, the, this. We do another thing also, this exercises, um, and the butterfly hug, and everything mm -hmm. anybody can do just by, you know, um, by watching and then doing it. Uh, we love it, you know, dancing and like this, and we have these songs on the, on the, on the website, also about this self havening because it is the same, because it's things that people have done all ancient times, taking your hand on your forehead, oh, no, I forgot something, or what happened, you know, because you really stimulate this blood circulation for your frontal uh, cortex. Mm -hmm. And that has, and, and taking the hands here when you have a headache or feeling, oh, what happened, you know, oh, I don't know, my temples are like pulsating, you know, or this, when you don't feel safe, or with somebody, oh, you see, it will be fine. My dear, it will be fine, and that starts. Well, that's how this evening starts. It's like, yeah, anybody do that. So it's nothing strange, actually. So when you explain those things, also wherever you are in the world, I can say because now I've been in so many places, or we have been in so many places. People say, "Aha, you're right. Yeah, that's true." Or you do like this when you're nervous. You know, you bring your whatever you call it in English, right. your, your hands like that. You press and you come to this. But Marianne was saying, you keep it and you hold it. And so it all, it all, and even doing, you know. And like, like Bianca was saying, you know, you experiment with it. And sometimes you, you, if you do it on the phone, you suddenly realize that you might be getting even better results than when you're seeing people. So it's, it's just try out all the different things. What it's mostly about is connecting neurologically to whatever it is that bothers you ever so slightly. It doesn't have to be more. Providing a safe space for the person to relax in getting a stimulus that comes in from the body, preferably on points that are very connected to the both hemispheres of the brain. Now, whether that is a havening touch or a tapping or a butterfly hug. And I even heard the other day that a fantastic thing you can try when somebody says that they're feeling very anxious is to simply put their both hands out with the palms of their hands facing up. 
And neurologically, that will wire them to actually feel better in a little while just by doing that. Yeah. Or, I mean, this power pose, I mean, that's also, if you haven't watched Amy Cuddy's TED talk about power poses, then just go and check it now, Amy Cuddy, um, which also is, and, and then looking up a bit, you know, with your chin a bit up, uh, you cannot be depressed in this position. And by doing this some minutes per day, it actually has a lot of effect on your nervous system. So there's so many things that we do with the body because everything we do here will affect this and everything we do of the thoughts will affect this. So there's this constant double communication, which also affects, I mean, if any of you have been studying the vagus nerve or the polyvagal theory, and if you haven't, then do it because this, the vagus nerve is the one that connects all this parasympathetic nervous system. And when you look at it, it's like a tree upside down and it connects every, everything down to the, to the, to the guts from this, which, which means that when you get nervous, your voice is the first to, to or, or the facial expression, and then the voice, and it goes down. It also connects between the heart and the brain, you know, the rhythm, which is the heart rate variability. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is fascinating. So when you do things that the vagus nerve likes, it will give a lot of good signals, will make you more relaxed, like yoga, dancing, singing, and tapping, and, and so many things, eating good food. It stimulates it. When it's not, then it's like, what you say, Draws it, pulls back. Pulls pulls back. back. Yeah. But when you do those things, it uh, so it affects the parasympathetic nervous system there because it is so tightly connected and it's fantastic. So the whole system is 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 so wonderfully constructed. When we do things that that actually the vagus nerve likes, then we will feel good. <laughs> so we actually have one more person who was listening. So I wonder, Placid, are you there somewhere? Fine, he was here before. Yeah, I think Basil is there, but with no video. I'm not sure if he has sound either, but he's definitely hearing us. Yeah. Hmm. Can you hear us, Basil? Yeah, there. If you unmute him. Yeah. Hello. Hello. And you don't have any. Hey. Video. You don't have any video. It's not working. I don't. I, I tried, so it's not working. Okay. But, but I can hear you. I, I see you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you can just introduce yourself shortly here, and um, we are actually supposed to finish by, by but you have been part of this. Patiently listening. Yeah. So this is Placid in Rwanda, so you can just introduce yourself a bit, Placid. Yes, please. Yeah, you do it yourself. <laughs> okay, as I'm Placid from Rwanda, um, I practiced TTT two years ago. I have found it as I myself I call it a weapon to to pull down like our brokenness uh, concerning the uh, my, the experience people have been passing through. I personally, so I've been. I've been using it, I use it every day in school, in prisons, in, in a bus, wherever I am, just I share, I'm flexible to share. And I'm also sensitive, to, like to see someone who is so stressed, I can realize it easily. That's, uh, in summary, that's who I am. Thank you. And I was so affected by this presentation of this evening. Yeah, so I mean, Placid and us, we have been working together for one year and a half actually in Rwanda. And as Placid says, in many of the prisons in Rwanda, and uh, also with refugees in Uganda, and we've been to Tanzania and Kenya and, um, and Congo, uh, doing uh, trainings in schools and in rehabilitation centers with women who've been sexually abused. Um, I can say, like Placid said, everywhere. So he is. Uh, um, a very good I mean, a trainer um, of people uh, and also using his own experiences of, of, of healing from, from his own um, experiences in, in life through this tapping. So thank you so much Placid for, for joining us and um, even though we don't, unfortunately we don't see you, we see your name, <laughs> Placid. Good. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. So if we're going to round this up now, if you have any, is, anybody has a specific reflection you feel that you want to share right now, 
please go ahead. Otherwise, we're going to round it off. It's going to be recorded. You will get the recording. Other people will get to share this recording with us so that they can learn from all of your experiences. I hope that's okay with you. Uh, great. So you will find it on our website. On the website, you also find loads of free resources, instruction materials, movies, webinars, and links to other stuff. If you find something incredibly inspiring anywhere, mail us so we can share it with somebody else. Yeah, and also if you do something, in, I mean, if Gail, if you go to a school or, you know, any of you go um, when you work with some, some uh, Hispanic communities or wherever, you know, you reach out, please let us know because we can share it with others, your experiences. And that's how we build, you know, so much and uh, like a, um, a whole um, library of experiences that people can, can, can rely to and, and find inspiration from. But I want to finish with uh, an exercise that you often actually start with. So I'll just show it to you because, um, and then you can do it. And I think at least Bianca has been with us doing it because we met in, in England. Um, and it is a, um, a, a greeting actually that we learned in, uh, in the Congo with uh, some women, young women in the rehabilitation center. Uh, so it just goes like this. So it's just like, you know, that's clapping and then you go uh, for your chest and then you do the clapping again, you go in front and then you do the clapping again and you go up. And for us, this has, I mean, we always ask what people see in this exercise and people always have different explanation and we say everything is, is right. Um, but one basic thing of it is this, that you have to, you know, heal yourself first um, before you assist others. And then you can reach the world, but you also need power from universe or nature or God or whatever, you know, your higher self, whatever is your interpretation of where you get your inspiration from. So that is a very nice, you know, um, thing to start with because people need to know that you have to treat yourself. You have to help yourself. We work a lot with volunteers, uh, like in Greece, on, with the refugees, and that's where we, um, who were very stressed, you know, from doing things. So they actually start yelling at the refugees, which is not a very good idea, mm -hmm. which is contrary to, to be grounded, calm, and you know, showing that I am here, you know, and just come and I'll, 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 I'll be with you, here. I'll stand with you, or I'll give you a cup of tea, or whatever you do, you choose to do to, to create this, this safe and calm space. So let's do it together. Yeah. One more time, let's do it. Bravo. Thanks everybody. Thank you so much. Get certified, answer the cases, do the assessment, and write us emails. Yeah. <laughs> this is the, do you see yeah, this? That's oh, that's <laughs> Do you see this? Yep, <laughs> that's it. Fine, call and pass it on. Mm -hmm. Thank you.